those who sort of <clears throat> keep up with me and follow me, you probably noticed that I have not been uh, posting and sharing content uh, during the normal cycle of videos. Um, and as you almost, you, you also probably are aware, um, I lost my mom on the 29th of September and we are finally laying her to rest on tomorrow so this week has been hectic you know I've gotten some things done uh, that's just how I move um, sitting still doesn't work for me at all so uh, but I need to manage my energy and manage where I placed uh, my focus and so that's what I've been uh, focusing on for those of you who have reached out in any way um, your sentiments your energy your efforts your prayers your words are immensely appreciated uh, and they have been life uh, to me and my siblings and uh, our families uh, so again thank you I'm just sitting here and I'm riding around taking care of some uh, last minute errands and stuff like that and uh, I'm thinking about something and it's just on me and there's a part of me saying hey look just put that shit off till next week and then there's something on me saying no say it and let it go and move on because it is what it is and so I'm going to do that uh, before I forget uh, look you know the routine if you like it click the like button if you think it's important and, and, it, and it's uh share worthy share it uh, if you think that i may be someone you want to follow subscribe real simple for those of you who are my diehards uh the ones who have been riding with me literally for the 13 or 14 years that i've been on social media uh those of you who have actually been following and supporting me before i came to social media you know the work i do know the importance of the work I do. We are literally preparing right now for another mental health symposium uh, dealing with trauma within the community, adverse childhood experiences, uh, and the influence of microaggressions as it pertains to uh, the distrust in the community as it, as it uh, relates to law enforcement. That's coming on the 18th of next month. We're preparing for that. So you know the work I do. Uh, if you believe in it, show some love, show some support, and donate. Uh, here we go. Here's what I want to talk to you about. Real simple. Blacks been getting gassed up by de the Democratic Party, the Dem, uh, Dems for 60 years, at least. Gassed up, made uh, false promises. We have as a voting block, as a collective, increased our voter turnout every presidential cycle since the Voter Rights Act was passed. And we have uh, simultaneously voted. 90% of our vote has went Democrat. And we have not only not gained any ground, we have lost ground. Let's talk about this current administration and then I'm gonna be done with this thing because it's some, at some way, some point, you have to gain an understanding of how things work. You have to develop a perspicacity of the dynamics at play. And unfortunately, we don't seem to have this progressive capacity to say, okay, that didn't work, we won't do it again. It's like we're locked in and we're buying everything that's being sold to us despite not having any evidence whatsoever that what we're being sold is working for us. And actually, in many instances, we have the, the contrary. We have the, the proof that what we are supporting isn't working for us. Let's talk about this guy uh, in the Oval Office right now, Joe Biden. Let's talk about the person who told us if we didn't vote, vote for him, that we weren't black. I mean, the audacity of that and the fact that we weren't that offended by it. Um, 
you know, the thing, it, it goes to the level of disdain and disrespect and a lack of, for a better term, respect that political parties, and this isn't any cape for rep Republicans. I don't trust anything about the whole system. And if you follow me, you know that. I don't trust the whole system. But I don't have to warn blacks about Republicans. It's an inherent distrust as far as that goes. So I can spend a lot of my time talking about the things we do trust that are killing us, literally. And this guy no, has delivered nothing to us while demanding everything for us. Now, let's go back and look. This is the guy in the 70s who said he would absolutely fight busing of blacks in the white school districts with his very being because busing blacks into white schools was creating a jungle in which he did not want his children to grow up. This is the same guy. This is the same guy that authored the crime bill that is still decimating the black community right now, giving disproportionate sentences to... Um, giving disproportionate sentences to um, those who were involved in infractions related to crack cocaine versus uh, powder cocaine. Um, decimate, decimated the black community. Disproportionate sentencing for the same drug, just in different forms. Uh, absolutely no focus on no focus whatsoever on the um, need to rehabilitate to provide support systems for um, rehabilitation and healing and it has produced nothing but trouble and then here he is again and there is absolutely no uh, absolutely no support whatsoever within our community that he's provided he, there's nothing about reparations but we're sending billions to the Ukraine billions to Israel um, and not only that and this is the reason I'm here the influx of migrants that are being underwritten by a government that's constantly telling us they can't afford to do anything for us. They're being underwritten. They're being, their, their housing is paid for. Now he's just signed in uh, new policies that provides them with medical care. Uh, all of these things, while we are still trying to solidify and hold together our communities that are being rapidly gentrified and we are dealing with serial force displacement at an unbelievable rate to the point to where we're going to be so scattered and so pushed apart that we're not we're going, we are rapidly being replaced by a migrant population many of which who are hostile towards us because of the negative propaganda that is pushed by the very government that we are sitting up hoping Vic, hoping will fix our issues and we are not doing anything about it we can say what we want to but what I can tell you is there has been no um, no policies no support no um, aid nothing and my whole thing is I don't want handouts I want what's owed to me I want what we have earned I want what we deserve based off of what has happened to us and that is the thing that I think that we allow to be sold to us too is like reparations or handouts no reparations are just that it's repairing something you screwed up that's what reparations are reparations are this is what happened to us and because of that this is what we are owed and first of all you you, you owe us back pay on the work our ancestors did for free you owe us that then you owe us for the pain and suffering associated with the trauma that our ancestors experienced as slaves. Then you owe us for purposely blocking our ability to develop our own after we were quasi-freed from slavery. 
you owe us that with black codes, convict leasing, uh, reconstruction, Jim Crow segregation. You owe us that. Then you owe us for the continued infractions and injuries that we are receiving constantly today with benign neglect, redlining, gentrification, mass incarceration, mis miseducation. These are things that we are constantly and still experiencing. So you owe us for that. So that isn't a handout. That's, hey, run us our money. So my whole thing is, at what point are we going to stop looking at the Democrats and seeing them as allies when they have covertly probably been more destructive to black progress than Republicans? Republicans, you pretty much know what you're going to get. Republicans, you can find a way to navigate a bunch of their policies by simply becoming a business owner. Honestly. And the thing is, these programs, what we have to first understand, and then I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop this, because I could go on the whole tirade right about now. But what we got to understand is until we are willing to accept and acknowledge that people benefit from our suffering, people benefit from our perpetual poverty, people benefit from us not being able to get on. So many people live certain lifestyles, have certain ranges of power and influence because of our ineffectiveness to exert our own force. And as long as that's the case, those people are never going to empower us. Let me tell you something. If the Dem Dems wanted to empower us, they've had many opportunities to do so within the scopes and confines of the Constitution. They have not. That means that they don't want to. It's that simple. And no matter how much you romanticize it, no matter how much you want to make it be good, how, ma how much they sold you, it's us against them, that's two wings that belong to the same bird. The right wing conservative Republicans, the left wing liberal Democrats are all on the same bird. That bird has been shitting on the head of black people since 1619. So then the question is, what are we going to do about it? And that's been the message I have been preaching and the uh, uh, opportunities and options that I have been presenting for 30 years. So we're either going to learn for ourselves what we're going to do for ourselves or we're going to find ourselves basically irrelevant and at the mercy of the people with the power in this country in a way that we have never been before. You think it was bad doing slavery. You think it was bad doing Reconstruction. You think it was bad doing Jim Crow. When we become completely economically irrelevant and our already weak black bloc vote is diluted even more by migrants that are being given citizen rights even though they're not citizens and we're sitting up and half of the time co-signing the BS because we don't understand it and they play to our morality. They play to us caring about people to sneak people in under us that will literally pull the rug from underneath us. We have got to become smarter. We have got, got to become more sophisticated in our understanding of how things work so that we can understand when something is literally for us and when it is, isn't. And at this point, we don't have that. And that's my push. We've got to do better. But I just had to talk about that. We have given so much attention to our vitriol and hatred of Jada and what's going on with her and Will. And... I'm not going to get on that, but, you know, I'm not saying she don't deserve all the smoke she getting, but I'm saying we got so much hatred for that and we're sitting up and the people are literally sticking it to us. Now, what she's doing is her and Will, and it has an impact on influence on how we view things and scope things. So there's some indirect influences, but we are directly being screwed by these politicians and we don't have no smoke for them. We don't have no heat for them. We are sitting up and there's constantly showing up. One of the things I did when I set up this uh, symposium, when I had the planning meeting uh, with the people who are going to be involved because I'm leading this symposium, uh, one of the things that was done and the, the pastor who I have a great deal of respect for because he's about community first in a way that you don't see it in pastors. Uh, one of the things that he and I agreed upon is that there will be no politicians participating. And why? 
because there's always an agenda. We, we want the agenda to be healing in the community. We want the agenda to be power in the community. We want the agenda to be solutions for the things that people in the community are really spilling. Not a bunch of stuff to get you gassed up to get your vote. Not a bunch of hype about talking somebody else down while talking myself up. Not a pitch for an upcoming whatever, but to sit up and say, look, this is what's going on. This is the best way to deal with it. And that's gotta be the mindset. I don't want to pay your I don't want to play your political games. I want to see work. I want to see I want to see action. I want to see uh, focus. I want to see an agenda. I want to see a plan. I want to see people coming together. And if it's not about that, I don't want to be a part of it. And you know, it makes enemies. It makes people that sit up and make phone calls to try to uh, shut you down. It makes that. But I tell you what, I'm going to be consistent in my message. I'm going to be consistent in my focus. I'm going to be consistent in the things that matter to me. And ain't nobody going to stop that. I'll fight to the end doing what I believe in. I'll never sit down and compromise and harm my people for the sake of a dollar, for the sake of a position, for the sake of connectivity and access to anything. I will do what I've always done. And what happens, happens. But we need more men to do that. We need more women to come on board and get behind the things that are supporting us. It's that simple. And with that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Uh, and you guys, I thank you again for all the love and the well wishes uh, concerning uh, the death of my mom and the uh, keep us lifted. Obviously, we've got to get through tomorrow, which is going to be a difficult time. <laughs> but uh, God's got us. And on that note, look, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder.